So this weekend I recorded an interview with Jack in the RV and it was a technical disaster. Uh, the joys of a one-man shoot. Jack got delayed and then he only had 15 minutes, which we meant we had to rush through it. Um, I'd set it up for daylight and it had gone dark. I moved a camera, sat in my own shot, and then I had a voice recorder that decided it didn't like big SD cards and didn't record any of the tie clip mics. So I kind of binned it, but then I came back and looked at it again and I thought, well, if you're a hardcore fan, the questions and the answers are still good and you can kind of tell what everybody's saying. So um, for no technical reasons whatsoever, I'd like you to watch this, but for the content, I think it's worth a look. So let's give it a go. Still blink every time. <laughs> <laughs> so obvious question, how did today go? Today, ooh, if you'd have asked me that after FP2, I'd say, well, yeah, we're going pretty well. Um, with P3 and FP2, did our best time on old tires as well. You know, we didn't find the time on new tyres, I was feeling quite optimistic going to qualify and then we could sort of see the grey or, or black clouds actually coming over when we're sort of sat there waiting to go and we're thinking oh, it's a matter of time this basically and then we got out there and it started to spit with rain and we thought, just carry on, just carry on then the red flag came out as per usual when it starts to rain went back out again, we didn't cross the tyres, we sort of took a bit of a gamble we were like right okay, because the rain's starting to come down again we'll just continue on and just see what we can do with the tyres back to front basically and we're going okay, I think it was P4, P5 at the time and I was on my best lap, I think I was two or three temps up on my best that I did in the end and I got traffic at the last corner so yes we finished up P7 in qualifying but actually if you look where we should have been, we should have been a front row lockout I think for Eurotech Right. it's, it's okay, so, I mean it's, it's yeah. you know, P7's not bad but it could have been better but then again it could have been a lot worse Yeah. to round it up so, a couple of questions sort of away from today. Um, did Jeff Smith hire you as his Trojan horse to sneak you in the back door and sort of rack up valuable points in 2017 for a team win? Just put it on par, wasn't he? So I can't really say that. He's just outdone everybody on the grid. I mean, it was a blinder of a lap from Jeff. It was good. It was really good in those conditions. It's harsh for me to sit here and say there's a bit of luck involved in it. But, you know, being on the right tyre at the right time and not getting traffic on your best lap is very important. And, you know, we just didn't get it quite right today. And I think Jeff's side of the garage did, and you know, fair play to them, they've gone out there. They've stuck it on pole position, but tomorrow's another day, and like you say, we're out there hopefully to get some good points for the team, but it's also important that both cars do well, because in the Independence Championship, that then moves us up as a team, up the grid. So when we go out to the start of practices, we're starting further up the grid. And I think it's good, and it's a bit of a bragging, right, isn't it? The further up the pit lane you are, the better you're doing, basically, as a team. So, you know, we're out there together to try and get as many points as we can and make the team look good. How much physical training do you do in preparation? Oh, mate, so much. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's very hard to replicate driving, you know, without actually doing the driving aspect of it. Um, even when I first jumped in this car, this was the first right-hand drive touring car I've actually driven. And um, my left arm with a gear stick was aching like mad after the first day. And it was just because I hadn't used that arm before for changing right. gear. Obviously, in a road car, it's a lot easier. This is a lot more force going through it. But it's more the heat, I find, you, you know, the... the Yes, they're quite physical to drive, you know, when you're sort of loading up at high speed, the power steering does get quite heavy. But actually when you're sort of driving around with 55 degrees cockpit temperatures with four layer fireproof suit, fireproof underwear, balaclava, gloves, boots, basically your sort of your Arctic kit on. You're basically going around there at the North Pole, um, but we're in a 55 degree cockpit. So it, that's tiring. I think that's sort of physically and mentally tiring over the day. And come the end of the uh, race weekend or certainly race day, uh, absolutely shattered and it's just nice to get home and just lay on the bed and usually when I get home I can't sleep anyway because I'm so much going through my mind it's just like oh, I just want to go to sleep but I can't but I say it's the heat more than the actual the driving aspect. We live in a time when sportsmen talk a lot about mental training as well did you have any of that did you have any mindset guidance? I don't get guidance from anybody else but I think you learn that yourself over the years you know if you jump straight into a touring car race weekend you know my first year in it 2013 I think it was I'd never driven the car before FP1 so right. I'd never tested it I just jumped straight in it and we had to get on with it and sometimes that's probably the best situation you, know, you get forced into something and it makes you just focus doesn't it and you have to get on with the job but I'd definitely say the more years I do and actually the more teams I've been with it makes you really look at things from different angles and get your mind in, in the right place you know some people like to be silent on their own some people like to be with their mates I like to just be relaxed bit of banter with the lads in the office you know but at the same time doing our job making sure we're focused mm. and then yeah we get on with the job but once I get the helmet on and I'm sat in the car before the grid that's when you get your own little bit of time just to chill out try and get your, your head straight sort of come up with a bit of a plan in your head and then usually you're out on track and that goes out the window straight away anyway so 
it doesn't matter how much you plan it when you get on track it's 31 other nutters around you as well do you ever get scared when driving no no i don't i think if you get scared from driving you're in the wrong job um you get a bit of adrenaline i think that's probably normal for anybody out there that's what we thrive on isn't it adrenaline it's a drug um but not scared no, no. The, one of the reasons I asked you that question is because I remember in, I think it was your first year in touring cars, we, we talk, I was talking to you about the speed, mm -hmm. and I think it was at Thruxton, mm -hmm. and you were going down the back straight, and you said that, I remember you told me in hospitality that... I didn't you, say I was scared. You didn't say you were scared, <laughs> but what you did was, you said you didn't realise how fast you were going until you accidentally put a tyre off, and that's when you got like a, oh my god, I'm this, this is how fast I'm going compared with the Cleos. Yeah, uh, they are faster than the clear in a straight line. You know, we do probably at Thruxton 150 mile an hour in the touring car, something around there. A Clio probably more like 120, so you've probably got another 30 mile an hour, but it stops a lot better. It's got bigger brakes, bigger tyres. So all round, you know, the general grip is is a lot more, but it's when it goes wrong, like you say. You know, that's when you realise the sort of speed you're doing. You know, it can snap a lot faster in a touring car compared yeah. to like a little clear or something. But I wouldn't say I really get scared. It's, it's good fun. I love it. Can you make a living as a BCCC driver? Yeah, yeah. Look at Jason, he's doing it right for himself, and he? He turned up in a helicopter last year, I think, or the year before, but it's... You haven't got the money with the manufacturers where you used to have back in the Super Touring car days. You know, there was drivers out there, I think, being paid sort of £800,000 back then uh, to do 10 weekends in a touring car. Um, unfortunately, I don't get that. I'm still working on Monday to Friday, or well, Monday to Sunday, most times, to pay the mortgage real life problems now mortgages and that sort of stuff the only way you can really do it is through sponsorship but you know it costs a lot of money to go racing in the first place so we have to raise the sponsorship anyway to get the car on track and you know, there's a bit of damage here and there that adds up as well a bit of money on top of that so you know i'm not earning anything from driving a touring car but i earn money because i do touring cars you know i earn from work because i'm a touring car driver i suppose so i coach a few younger people in other championships clios and uh, mini challenge Anything really, so if anybody needs a, some coaching, give me a cool up. I'm well, your man. Well, of course, you've driven me round this brand, brand circuit in a Clio on a track day. You yeah. Know? Yeah, I mean, I do a sort of one to one coaching as far as like race drivers go, but I also do corporate days as well. So I've got my little Clio track car, it's got dual controls, um, upgraded suspension, brakes, slick tyres, things like that. and. It's quite funny, you know, you can, you can upset quite a few people in much more expensive cars and a little Clio 197 and, mm. you know, it's good fun and it's, I can do that for sponsors as well. You know, we do sponsor days where we, we take them out in the car in the little Clio and they're like, wow, I didn't know a Clio could do that. And, you know, they get to drive it, I can drive them around and it's, it's quite a good experience and a bit of an eye opener at the same time. I did actually say there that you drove me around this track, yeah. actually. I drove you around this track yeah. and I think I put you where you are today. I was scared. I'm glad I had the brake pedal on my side. That's what I'm going to say. I thought you didn't get scared. Oh, you I, don't get scared when you're think, driving. I don't get scared when I'm driving, but when I've got a lunatic who's used to driving a, an RV round, yeah, yeah I do get scared. The lunatic that can't get around druids without going sideways or kneeling in the gravel. Do you remember that? A lunatic who crashed the golf buggy last night at about one mile an hour. Yeah. This is yeah. true. Yeah. Confession. Sorry yeah. about that. Yeah. I did actually crash into the back of a motorhome <laughs> and the guy is going to give me a bill very soon. So I think my days of racing are probably over. <laughs> the limited. Yeah. The other day I revisited the film Rush mm -hmm. and saw a vision of being a racing driver as being almost like rock and roll. Um, my other passion. Um, are those days gone or did they ever exist? Uh, I guess the sort of closer you're going to get to that in the touring car bag is probably Rob Austin, isn't it? You know, he was a bit rock and roll, but... Well, he was in it, he drove. He, was, he did, yeah. Yeah, he drove yeah. the cars in it, well, I some think, of them. I think him and his dad actually built a few of the cars as well. So okay. they've got sort of quite a good connection with the Rush film. Um, I'd say he is probably the most rock and roll, but you've got James Cole as well. He plays in a rock band mm. as well as doing touring cars. Um... But, you know, we get breathalyzed in the mornings now, every day. So there's no uh, turning up with a stinking hangover after 25 Jaeger bombs the night before. It's, you know, we're here to do a serious job. And don't get me wrong, we all like to enjoy ourselves at the same time. And as do the F1 drivers. But, you know, when we're here, we're focused on one thing. And you get away a bit more back in the old days, didn't you? You know, everyone used to love that. That was part of it. Like James Hunt, people like that. That was what used to sell the sponsorship deals. Not anymore, maybe. You have a shiny new Honda Civic Type R. Brand new, sitting outside your hospitality. Um, I think it's great that you, you drive the car on the track that uh, that you own in real life, or vice versa. Yeah, yeah. Um, how did that come about? 
Um, it came about through Honda contacting me actually, which is always a nice um, message to answer. You know, my phone popped up and I was actually a little bit depressed at the time because it was the same day I drove a BMW last year and my BMW was going back. And the nice guys at Honda, uh, Honda UK, messaged me saying, "Do you fancy a Type R?" So that was quite a an up and down day, really. Oh, M4 was going. Oh, look, Civic Type R's turned up. This is amazing. So, you know, I've got to say a massive thank you to Honda for trusting me in one of their little shiny new road cars. But um, they're brilliant, brilliant, brilliant car all round. You know, it, it looks looks fast, doesn't it? It, it looks great. Um, it was really shiny until I got it dirty driving it backwards and forwards to the track. Um, but at the same time, it's comfortable and economical as well. And you know, it's. I guess it's a good advert, isn't it? You know, if the drivers are driving the cars on the road, um, we're, I guess we're an ambassador for the company, and um, it's good. Just on that point, I, I, I think anybody who's watching this is probably a pretty hardcore touring car fan and knows that the, a racing car isn't like a road car, so let's not insult <laughs> their intelligence with that. But is there something good about driving the same shell and kind of dynamics of a road car? Is there anything... I mean, certainly you can relate to the image, can't you? I mean, if you look at the road car and the race car, you can quite clearly see the Civic Type R is quite similar to look at the Civic Type R we race in the actual British Touring Car Championship. So I think that's one good thing. I mean, to drive, yes, I mean, the slick tyres straight away make a massive difference on a, a ro road car and a race car. Uh, the suspension's different, the gearbox is different. But like you say, at the same time, the shell fundamentally is the same shell that we use in the road car, wheelbase, things like that. So. I think it's quite clear to see. I've, I've only owned this Civic Type R road car for a week or so now, and it puts a smile on my face every time I drive it. So they've got a great foundation to build a good race car from, I think. Jack, thank you very much. Um, good luck tomorrow. Hopefully we move forward, mate. Cheers, mate. I hope Cheers, we got buddy. all that. If we yeah. didn't, it's too late. Well, we've got more time to do more, haven't we? Well, we've got three cameras, and hopefully the good one got it, yeah. and the other two... But, uh, not quite as good. <laughs> Did something. Oh, right, mate. I should. Oh, get rid of this, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah.